Lenovo's Legion Slim 7 is a thinner and lighter version of the popular Legion Pro 7, but compromises often have to be made to go more portable. Well, that may not be the case here, as the Slim actually ends up outperforming many larger and heavier laptops. My Slim 7 has the anodized storm grey finish. It's got an all-metal design with aluminum lid, interior and bottom panels. The build quality feels really nice. There's only a little flex if you go looking for it, but it's not that bad at all and quite sturdy compared to most other laptops. The top of the lid sticks out a bit for the camera, making one finger opening very easy, and the screen goes the full 180 degrees back for sharing. The hinges feel a bit stiffer than normal, but I liked it because it made the lid feel solid and not wobble around. The overall design is very similar to last year's version. My 2022 model has the darker Onyx grey finish, which may be why it doesn't feel as smooth as the newer one. Otherwise the newer one doesn't have this indent at the back where the rear ports connect. It's quite portable for a 16 inch laptop, and slightly shorter in depth compared to last year's model. The newer 2023 model weighs a little less too, at about 4.8 pounds or 2.2 kilos, increasing to 6.8 pounds or 3.1 kilos with a relatively small 230 watt charger. My Legion has Intel's Core i9-13900H processor, NVIDIA RTX 4070 graphics, 32 gigs of memory, and a 16 inch 165 hertz screen. But you can customize the specs quite a bit when ordering. You can check out the options with the link below. The keyboard has perky RGB backlighting, and and all keys and secondary functions are well lit. Keyboard brightness can be changed between three levels or turned off by holding function and pressing the up or down arrow keys. You can cycle through six different lighting profiles by holding function and pressing the space bar. You can get more granular with the brightness in Lenovo's Vantage software, and you can control the effects of the six profiles through here too. I liked typing on the keyboard. The presses just feel clicky and nice like other Lenovo laptops. The glass touchpad felt smooth, clicks anywhere, and worked well. The power button has a fingerprint scanner built in. I found it to work fast and accurately. The left side has two Type-C ports. The one closer to the back is Thunderbolt 4, while the one closer to the front is USB 3.2 Gen 2, followed by a 3.5mm audio combo jack, which was on the right in last year's version. The right side has an SD card slot and a switch for physically disconnecting the camera. The rest of the ports are on the back. From left to right, there are three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, HDMI 2.1, and the power input on the right. There are port icons above the rear ports which light up, making it much easier to see where you need to plug in without turning the laptop around. You can press the function and U shortcut to turn this on or off. It would have been nice to have one of the USB Type-A ports on the left or right sides instead of all on the back, but I guess we can't have everything in life. Lenovo's website says that both Type-C ports can be used to charge the laptop, but we only found that the Thunderbolt 4 port worked for this. The documentation also notes that it can support a 140 watt charge, but you need a 20 volt 7 amp charger, which isn't very common. You can get a special one from Lenovo that supports that, but otherwise you're going to be limited to 100 watts. You can connect a monitor to both Type-C ports, but the Thunderbolt port only works if Optimus is enabled, and it connects via the Intel integrated graphics, so it's limited by Optimus. If you disable Optimus, then the Thunderbolt port will not provide any DisplayPort output. But the second Type-C port, as well as the HDMI port, connects directly to the NVIDIA graphics bypassing Optimus, and that's whether Optimus is enabled or disabled. And we confirmed HDMI could run our LG B9 TV at 4K 120Hz 12-bit with G-Sync. Getting inside requires removing eight Phillips head screws, all the same length. It was quite easy to open with my usual pry tools. I'll leave a link to the ones I use below. I'm not sure what they changed because last year's model was almost impossible to open. Once inside, we've got the battery down the front, the single memory slot just above in the middle, installed SSD on the left, spare M.2 slot on the right, 
both of which are PCIe Gen 4, and the Wi-Fi 6E card is hiding underneath the installed SSD. I had no problems fitting a 4TB double-sided drive in either slot. The installed 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD was performing very nicely, but the SD card slot wasn't making the most of my UHS-2 V90 card. The card does not click in and sticks out quite far, so be careful not to bump it. The Wi-Fi speed was pretty good, only slightly faster compared to last year's model, which had a different killer Wi-Fi card. Unfortunately, 16 gigs of memory are soldered to the motherboard and cannot be changed. But there is at least one SODIMM slot. It's a 55 US dollar upgrade to get that filled with a 16 gig stick when ordering. Or you might be able to do it yourself for a bit less. The upgradability score loses a point for soldered memory, but at least it has 16 gigs soldered this year. I think last year's model was limited to 8 soldered, which is more limiting. The reason this year's is higher is because I found it way easier to open. The speakers are found underneath towards the front on the left and right sides. I thought they sounded quite good, well above average compared to other laptops. They're still clear at higher volume, there's some bass and hardly any wrist rest vibration. The latency mon results weren't great, but there's still a known Nvidia bug that may make this worse. The Slim is powered by a 4 cell 99.9 watt hour battery. The adaptive refresh rate option is new to the 2023 model. It automatically lowers the screen's refresh rate to 60 hertz when you unplug the charger to save power, and it goes back up to 165 hertz when you plug back in. You can also enable conservation mode in Vantage. This limits the maximum charge level between 75 and 80%, which helps the battery last longer. You cannot use it at the same time as rapid charge, and you've also got the option to charge the battery slower overnight. The battery lasted for over 7 hours in the YouTube video playback test, a good result for an Intel laptop compared to most others, but at the same time, last year's Slim with the same sized battery lasted for 43% longer, a massive difference. This year newer model lasted 41% longer with the game running though. The Legion also has this message from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to help you achieve your goals. My goal with this YouTube channel is to help you pick the right tech. And that needs skills in script writing, photography, and video production. All of this and more is covered in one of my favourite classes, YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD a fellow, though slightly bigger, tech YouTuber. Which is exactly the sort of class I wish existed when I was getting started. Even now, years into my journey, I'm still learning from others and improving. Which is what makes Skillshare's wide range of courses so awesome. Whether you're looking to build upon existing creative skills, skills for your career, or even find out what it takes to break into a new industry, Skillshare has got you covered. The first 1,000 people to join using the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? Redefine your work and achieve your goals by joining Skillshare today. Back to the laptop. Let's check out thermals next. The cooler is bigger compared to last year's version. There's an extra heat pipe shared between the CPU and GPU, and the pipe on the right that wraps around the fan is new. There are plenty of holes underneath for air intake directly above the fans. And air also comes in through the vents above the keyboard. Air gets exhausted out of the left and right sides, and from the corners on the back. The Vantage software lets us change between different performance modes, which from lowest to highest are quiet, balance, performance, and custom. Balance mode has an optional AI setting, which is meant to provide an optimal experience in supported games. Think best performance without the fans going too loud. Custom mode gives you some control over fan speed, or you can just set the fans to max, as well as some control over CPU and GPU thermal and power limits for finer tuning. We've also got the option of enabling a GPU overclock through Vantage 2. It works in all modes except quiet mode. You can customise it through here, but we've left it default any time it was tested. As I figure, it's a simple one-click option for a performance boost. All our testing has been done with it on. You can also press the function and Q shortcut to change between all performance modes except custom. The colour of the power button changes, so you can easily tell which is currently 
only in use, as noted here. Performance and custom modes cannot be used when running on battery power. The internal temperatures were cool enough when just sitting there idle. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU stress tests, which aim to represent a worst case full load scenario. No thermal throttling was happening, at least on the CPU and GPU cores. The temperatures were all relatively low for a laptop under load, but the GPU memory was thermal throttling at 110 degrees though. Manually setting the fans to max in custom mode was the same as performance mode, while the cooling pad I test with, linked below the video, was able to lower the temps a bit. These are the clock speeds during the same tests. Although performance and custom modes were the same temperature, custom mode was reaching slightly higher CPU and GPU clock speeds. Likewise, the cooling pad improved performance slightly too, which must be because it's helping the GPU memory throttling. The results are kind of weird. The GPU power limit was able to increase to 98 watts with the cooling pad, otherwise it ran between 80 and 90 watts in performance and custom modes. Hardware Info reported the voltage limit being hit in all three tests, but it would appear that more cooling seems to help. I'm guessing it's because the memory junction temperature was reported at 110 degrees Celsius. I don't think I've ever seen it that high before, so not sure if it's just my unit. I don't know, it's just a bit weird that the power level can increase with more cooling when the voltage limit is hit at all times, even if better cooling improves memory temps. There wasn't really a performance difference between performance and custom modes with an actual game running, and we can see that the AI mode was able to give a slight boost to balance mode. I didn't test thermals with the AI mode because it does nothing in that workload. The CPU can use more power in workloads where the GPU is idle, like in Cinebench. Although the power levels fluctuated quite a bit during testing, the multi-core performance was quite similar between balance, performance, and custom modes, but only performance mode was able to reach a higher single core score. This is the same thing that I discussed in the Lenovo lock review. Basically, by default, performance mode in Vantage sets the Legion performance mode power plan in Windows. Custom mode in Vantage sets the balanced mode. The expectation from Lenovo is that someone using custom mode in Vantage will also tweak the power plan to suit their needs. Personally, I would have preferred custom to give best performance by default, but that's me. Anyway, if we go with the best single and multi-core results possible, it ends up just 8% faster compared to last year model with a 12th gen processor. There really wasn't much performance gain between 12th and 13th gen. There's a slightly larger 11% boost to single core score, but some of that would simply be due to my 2023 model having an i9 instead of an i7, as this increases single core boost speed. Performance lowers if we unplug the charger and instead run purely off of battery power. The single core performance didn't change, and multi core performance was now 61% above last year's model. So, a great result and still decent performance when unplugged. Most laptops I test are in the low 30 degree Celsius range on the keyboard at idle, and the Slim 7 felt a little warm as it's metal, but it wasn't hot. It's warmer with the stress test running, but I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. Balance mode was much the same. It's using more power and generating more heat in this mode, but that's offset by faster fans. Performance mode was much the same, and then not too much difference in the highest custom mode with the fans maxed out. The fans are louder though, let's have a listen. The fans were completely silent at idle, and then it gets louder in the higher performance modes with the stress test running as expected. The screen is a bit different compared to last year's model. It's still a 16 inch 16 by 10 panel, so more pixels vertically compared to a 15 inch screen. But this year, the resolution goes up to 3200 by 2000, which is what we have here. This is a $15 upgrade on Lenovo's website. Gamers would likely be better with the cheaper 2560 by 1600 screen. Lower resolutions are easier to run, plus you get a higher refresh rate and brighter screen. The 3200 by 2000 panel in mine has excellent color gamut and looks nice. 
It may not be a 500 nit panel like the cheaper one, but I never thought it wasn't bright enough. But ours also maxed out at 460 nits, a bit over the 430 on the spec sheet. But this can vary a little based on the panel lottery. Backlight bleed was only minor. It wasn't bad enough to notice during normal use, but this will vary between panels. Lenovo's Vantage software has an overdrive option, which is meant to lower the screen's response time when enabled. I measured average greater gray screen response time at 7.3 milliseconds, so not quite the 6.06 milliseconds needed for transitions to occur within the refresh window. I got the same results whether overdrive was on or off without any overshoot or undershoot, meaning the overdrive mode is not working with the 3200 by 2000 screen. It's not a bad result, just not as good compared to others, including last year's Slim 7. It's possible that this year's 2560 by 1600 is using the same panel as last year's version. So in that case, like I said, it'd be a better option for gamers. The total system latency is the amount of time between a mouse click and when a gunshot fire appears on the screen in CSGO. It's basically the same as last year's version, despite that having a faster screen. I've found laptops with NVIDIA RTX 40 series GPUs to be faster here, so that's probably why the gap closed compared to the screen response time. There's a 1080p camera above the screen. It does not have IR for Windows Hello Face Unlock, but it has Toby eye tracking. Here's how the camera and microphones look and sound, and this is what it sounds like while typing on the keyboard. This laptop has a mock switch. You can set the GPU working mode in Vantage to DGPU mode, but you have to reboot to apply that. It also has advanced Optimus, so you can instead make the change through the NVIDIA control panel without rebooting. And G-Sync is available when Optimus is disabled. Now let's find out how well the Slim 7 actually performs in games. It is a thinner laptop, so obviously performance isn't going to be that great, right? Actually, no. Because NVIDIA's RTX 4070 is basically limited to 100 watts due to a voltage limit, it ends up performing in line with other RTX 4070 laptops tested in Cyberpunk, despite potential GPU memory throttling. I mean, the fact that this thinner model is keeping up with the thicker Legion Pro 7 is enough to tell me that this is a good result. It's even further ahead of the bigger Legion Pro 5 at the higher 1440p resolution, and it's our best RTX 4070 result recorded so far for that matter, which I wasn't expecting considering its size. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark. And again, it's the best result we've got from any RTX 4070 gaming laptop so far. It's kind of crazy that it's basically matching last year's bigger Legion 7i with RTX 3080 Ti, but it can't maintain that at the higher 1440p resolution. Still though, it's matching Ace's bigger Helios 300 with 3070 Ti, but I've got a whole video comparing those GPUs in 25 games. Control is the third game where the 4070 was the best, but the dips in performance shown by the 1% lows were also lower compared to all other 4070 laptops. The 1% low was still lower at the higher 1440p resolution, despite the average frame rate being good. The other laptops would likely feel more stable here. But the 4070 Slim is still 56% faster compared to last year's 3060 version. Here are the 3D mark results for those that find them useful. Now for some content creator tests. Adobe Photoshop was tested with the Puget Systems benchmark tool, and it's about the same as last year's lower spec version. The newer version didn't have much of a lead over last year's in DaVinci Resolve either, and it's a lower 4070 result compared to the others now. A bit of a difference to what we saw in the games. GPU power limit matters far less in Blender, as all RTX 4070 results are basically within the margin of error range. We've also tested SpecView Perf, which tests out various professional 3D workloads. Lenovo's BIOS normally has a lot more customization compared to other laptops, but this one was on another level. There are way more options here than I've ever seen with any other Lenovo laptop, allowing you to change things from thermal and power limits to memory timing. Linux support was tested with an Ubuntu 23.04 Live CD. By default, the keyboard, touchpad, camera, and Wi-Fi worked, but the speakers did not. Keyboard shortcuts to adjust screen brightness, keyboard brightness, keyboard lighting effects, rear port icons, and performance modes all worked fine. Pricing and availability will change over time, so check the link below for current updates
updates and sales. And if this laptop does go on sale, we'll be sure to add it to our gaminglaptop.deals website. We update that every day to include all of the latest sales. So make sure you check it out regularly to save money on your next gaming laptop. At the time of recording, Lenovo sells this exact configuration that I've tested for a little over 2200 US dollars. Best Buy have it with half the RAM and the lower tier screen for $2100 though. The cheapest option with i7 processor and RTX 4060 graphics starts from a little under $1800. Still though, it is on the more expensive side for an RTX 4070 gaming laptop compared to other deals I've seen. So ultimately, it depends on how much you want to pay for the extra features here. Those include the premium all metal build quality and thinner design while still competing with thicker and heavier laptops with similar specs. There are only small, but welcome changes compared to last year's Slim 7. The newer 2023 version is a tiny bit lighter and a little smaller but its battery life isn't as good. It is nice to have double the amount of soldered RAM though. Obviously, I would prefer if we had two memory slots instead of soldered memory, but 16 gigs soldered compared to eight gigs last year is still an improvement. We've got an Intel 13th gen CPU now, but that's not really too much better compared to 12th gen. The main difference comes from the RTX 4070. Even at 100 watts with Nvidia's voltage limit, that offers a good performance uplift compared to last gen. I didn't have have the 3070 version of the Slim last year, but even compared to other 3070 laptops, it's still a nice improvement. It can even compete against other bigger 4070 laptops too, because those are subject to the same voltage limit. In other words, at the end of the day, the Slim 7 can reach basically the same FPS as a thicker and heavier laptop that has the same specs. But what if you need even more performance? It might be worth stepping up to the Legion Slim 7's bigger brother, the Legion Pro. Oven. Check out this video next to get all of the details.